here. Well, hi, welcome everybody to another episode of our Women Lead online forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And today we feature Sean Marie Turry and Truth is the New Black, a thought-provoking fireside style virtual conversation series. It's real talk about business and life and career, about desire and disappointment. You know, basically it's about truth and what it takes to create a life and work that you can love. And Sean Marie is a lifelong creative entrepreneur, writer, poet, artist, and master desire map facilitator. And she's my partner in crime here at the Women Lead Online Forums. So without further ado, I hand it over to uh, the capable and entertaining and talented Sean Marie Turry. Take it. Patty, thank you so much, darling. And I love being your partner in the Women Lead Online Forums. And it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you so much. And welcome, Charles Seta, uh, our guest today and I also want to thank Sonia Petrick who is our featured guest for today's Truth is the New Black and uh, Sonia is the founder of uh, tell me tell me the name of, of your new business this new baby that you've just birthed again yes my new baby is the copy doula copydoula.com yes. <laughs> yes and how old is the copydoula.com for about four weeks now, four weeks old. That's right. Brand new. So, so what <laughs> I what baby. I want to say that again. I said brand new baby. <laughs> it is a brand new baby. And uh, for those of you that are with us today, or if you're listening to the recording, uh, as you know, our topic is rebooting the new year. Uh, it's about the art of being more and doing less. And Sonia and I had the wonderful opportunity to have a conversation before we had our, uh, our online forum and we were talking a little bit about what our conversation was going to be like. And what I want to share with our listeners is that Sonia and I had actually had a couple of previous dates on the calendar that for a number of reasons just ended up not being ideal. And so, uh, what I thought was so interesting is that where we started with this whole idea of this conversation was originally about goal setting and goals with soul and go get it and make it happen and uh, coming at, you know, coming from the end of the year and coming at the beginning of the new year with this excitement and this delicious like fever, like what am I going to do next and what is really heart centered for me? And all of that was definitely true and authentic at the time. But I think one of the things, and I'll speak for myself, is that I, I found myself once January came and went, or once the new year came and went, that I had once again bought into and been swept up by this idea of the new year and the new you and all the new things that we're going to do and create and birth. And the truth of the matter was, I wanted to be in that space, but that's not where I was. And then I felt that there was this conflict in this self-imposed pressure of feeling like I should be there and being uh, disappointed with myself that I wasn't there. And so come full circle to where we are today, uh, Sonia, likewise, during the birth of the new year, had her own epiphany about all of this going and doing and striving. And she hit the brakes and said, you know what? This actually isn't what I want to be doing. And so we're going to dive into a little bit for Sonia, what a reboot looks like for her. Uh, but once again, uh, Sonia Petrick from the copy doula of four week old new baby business. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. And I would love to know from your perspective, how does that topic land for you uh, when we talk about rebooting the new year and this art of being more and doing less? Like, how does that sit with your nervous system? Uh, was that an easy transition for you to get to? Was it a little bit of a struggle? Like, if you could take us a little bit on your on the way that you got there, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. So. I, I wouldn't say that it was an easy transition um, because anytime that you do something um, 
that's like from the heart, it's from inside, it's something that you just feel that you want, um, especially if it's contrary to maybe what society is telling you you should do or family or friends or whoever, if it's contrary to that, you have a lot of junk that messes with your mind when you're making these decisions. And when you step out and just give yourself permission to be yourself mm. and really tune into what you want, it sounds really simple, but there's a lot of garbage to work through. There, there's a lot of crap that has to get burned away so that you can really see a clear path. And so it, it actually was a journey of um, close to a year total of me coming to these realizations and making these changes. And, you know, I, I think that New Year's resolutions are, are, they're great for some people, but I think for the most part, it's, it's a false start. <laughs> um, I'm really not in agreement with it. It's, it. it's a new year and that's exciting. And, and if you've had a horrible year, it is kind of nice to say, well, that year's done. <laughs> like, let's start <laughs> a new year. So Indeed. it's not like it's all bad, but as far as creating these um, huge resolutions, based on a single day of the year, for me, it's just never rang true. My new year usually starts around spring. Mm -hmm. It just does. Like it just, it, I'm kind of in planning mode and it, for the beginning of the year and it's winter time. It's, I'm not really in action yet. And then when spring comes forth, I'm like, well, this is my new year and here's my new ideas. And I, and I usually have like a lot more activity, you know, around mid to late March. And that's how I've always been. And then I feel it also in the fall. Um, you know, in Texas, it stays hot a long time. So for us, the fall is more like November, but <laughs> you know, we, it just stays so hot. But, um, but when, when we feel cooler temperatures and it's nice out, you know, I'll kind of feel like a second reset a lot of times too. Mm. So I don't know if I really answered your question completely, but I, I think I touched on on some of those points. Yeah, no, Annie, and I just, I'm just genuinely interested in having this conversation with you and also Patty and Charles Seta, who I'm so happy to have with us today, um, around this idea of this self-imposed pressure that we set on ourselves. And, and even in, you know, in retrospect, looking back at when you and I were having these conversations the latter part of last year, you know, around, you know, setting goals with soul. What I think is really interesting, Sonia, is that even that conversation, there there was a frequency that I could feel. Like like I felt like you and I were feeling just organically by this by what has become kind of a natural cycle, which is actually not the natural cycle, but that there has been this um, manufactured cycle of this raising of energy, like getting ready to go into the new year saying goodbye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bless, bless you, Charles Seta. Um, getting ready to come into the new year. So even though we were saying like, oh, gold with soul and things that, you know, feel really heart centered and aligned, I could feel in our conversation that there was a charge to it. And yeah. so, you know, and what you and I talked about this morning was this incredible divine timing. And even though like we were like, oh, you know, we, we had missed a couple of these dates and, but this was the perfect timing because had we had this conversation then, um, and I'm not saying that that would have been in any way affected your decision, but you were actually in the middle of this own unpacking and transition uh, yeah. to end up birthing this, this new business. And I'd, I'd love for you to, Sonia, to share the story that you'd shared with me about um, in the recent past, you had this financial goal. Um, like yeah. there was this thing that you knew, like when you met this thing, that it was, that was going to be the pinnacle and that that was going to be when things started to change. So would you, would you share with our listeners what happened when that actually did come to fruition? Sure. So, um, and I'll even expand on it just a little bit. Um, I launched a digital agency in 2018 and I did it um, through Marie Forleo's B school. Um, so that that's really what gave me a lot of courage, you know, to go ahead and launch. And I had it in my mind that if I had, if I made a certain amount of money that year, 
And if I was able to land projects between the eight to $10,000 mark, that I will have quote unquote made it as a web designer, that I, I felt like I had to go high end or I was a failure. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to do large packages or I wasn't really contributing much. Uh, I don't know exactly where that came from, but it, there's kind of some general messaging out there with entrepreneurs right now of, hey, always go high end or you're leaving money on the table, uh, things like that. So I was just kind of surrounded by that story and I bought into it. So lo and behold, launched my business, did great. I did hit my annual target and I hit the target of the huge website package. And when I walked away from that deal, and I structured it exactly the way that I wanted to. But when I drove home, I had maybe five minutes of elation. And then it was quickly followed by this devastating feeling of actually, I hate this. Actually, I don't even want to do this. Actually, I, this does not light me up at all. What the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. And I thought, is this just imposter syndrome? Or, you know, what is this? Why am I so conflicted? I figured I would ride this high for months, right? Like, you did it. So I go home and I'm kind of crying. And my husband's like, are you just hormonal? Like, geez, you've been shooting for this for a long time and you landed it. I'm so proud of you. Why don't you just calm down? And I was like, well, I can't. I feel like this is wrong. But, you know, I was like, but I'm going to do it. I must be dealing with imposter syndrome. So I go through the whole project. It was very intense, very tight timeline. My kids were miserable. I was miserable. It, it was completely out of balance. It, like I was working weekends and nights, you know, to push through and do things right. It was awful, you guys. And I was like, I really thought if I hit this monetary target that it wouldn't matter what the work was. Mm. I really felt like so much validation was going to come from that check. Mm. And it was a lie. I bought into it and it was a lie. So I had to face that reality. I had to face the confusion and feeling like a failure and just all these ugly things, you know, rose up in my mind and in my heart. But through B school, I had uh, heard people talking about Danielle Laporte mm -hmm. and desire mapping. And it didn't really register with me before that point because I was, you know, hell bent on my agency and I knew what I wanted, what I was doing, and get out of my way, right? I can be very type A. And so I was like, well, let's just dial this back a little bit and, and see what maybe talking to my heart looks like. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I had a massive, basically year long unraveling and facing and breaking and it was kind of ugly, but it was really beautiful. And I discovered the truth that the work that I'd been doing, some of it was an alignment and it's good and it's all learning and it's all a lesson, but it served its purpose. And it was time to shut it down and focus on those pieces that actually did light me up, those doors that I opened that I should walk through. So that's what I've done. Awesome. And, so, and Sonia, how was, how was that for you with regards to the financial goals, like making the kind of shift that you made, um, knowing that the Louder Marketing Group, which was your marketing company, yeah. which was bringing in revenue, to yeah. shifting to this company that is more, um, even though there is the product component, which is writing copy for clients, that it's really more of a service-based business. So yeah. how is that kind of reconciliation for you between being like, I know that I'm making money over here, but I've not completely made revenue doing this type of work. So how, how is that for you to bridge that gap and, and where are you with it now? Well, you know, what I, that unraveling that I was talking about, part of what I had to unravel is money from my self-worth. Mm. I, I had to untangle all of that mess and figure out who am I aside from money, mm. <laughs> aside from supposed success, uh, who, who am I? And when I did that, when I kind of did that untangling, it really freed me up <laughs> to launch the Coffee Doula, to not worry so much about a specific annual target. And if I hit that target, it validates what I'm doing. The work itself validates itself. And I'm not making much money right now. 
actually. And you know what? I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm opening the right doors to the right places. Mm -hmm. I feel like the success will come. Um, and I'm okay with it that it's not here right now in monetary form. I'm super excited for the first time in my life to feel truthful uh, with myself and my gifts mm -hmm. and what I have to offer. I, I'm excited. So, yeah. Well, congratulations and uh, welcome. To this next version of you, Sonia, it's really beautiful. Thank you. And, and this is such an exciting and and it's an exciting topic, and I think it's a really important topic, uh, particularly for women. And Charles, Seta, and Patty, I'd love to ask you girls if you've had a similar experience where you've been on a path of you know, having something that on the outside, you know, people would be like, why in the world would she stop doing that? It's so great. And there's money and accolades and travel and, you know, things that, that are oftentimes enviable mm -hmm. to other people. They're like, gosh, I would love to have that life. But, you know, to your point, Sonia, you know, just about is, is it really our truth? Yeah. You know, and, and so I'd love to know from either of you, if you've had that experience or, you know, or even how you've experienced the new year and how you think about coming into March mm -hmm. of 2020, which is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> how you feel about, about looking right. at March as, a, as a, a new year reboot, like how you're feeling about all of that. There's, there's actually two things that I really love about this conversation. And the first is, uh, Sonia, when you shared <laughs> that, you know, you sort of, like your your new year is sort of like around March, you know, and then and then again in in the the fall. Yeah, I absolutely love that because mm. I was like, who says? Who says? That's right, <laughs> right? Yep. And so I I love that one because anybody that knows me <laughs> knows that I am usually slightly outside of the box. <laughs> I don't care what box it is, usually just on the other side of it. So yeah. I, I love that. And it's just, it's, it's being okay. It's like everybody is new year. You know, I've got to do this. I got to choose my word. I've got to do this. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. And I'm like, wow. But, but do we really? <laughs> Who right. says? Like, like really? Who says? <laughs> So I, I love that. And I'm probably going to be like, I'm going to be more cognizant of, of when that is for me, because we do have those seasons. And it's not just like once a year, like, right. like exactly. it might be a time in a couple of months where I have to like really hunker down and, and assess what am I yep. feeling here? What am I feeling here? And how am I going to move through the next 90 days. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've been thinking about the rest of the year. I'm like 90 oh, absolutely. days. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Sean Marie. Oh, yeah. 90 days. What is I that? most certainly do. Yep. And then I and then I think the other thing is is that, you know, I'm I'm here in the higher education space. And so I'm I'm always talking to students. My heart and I'm passionate about being of service to our our, you know women students here that are, you know, either looking to take on professional careers or become entrepreneurs. And, you know, in the entrepreneurial space, even in Orange County, it's like, how do you start a business and scale and grow? Oh. Scale and grow. Yeah. Like, is that what you want? Is that what you want? And so I feel like I've been like the sole voice in this community. Mm -hmm going, but what do you want? Right? right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's just, it's, it's so huge. And I feel so excited to be catching students at this phase in their lives and oh, yeah. that switch on so that they don't have to, you know, 20 years down the road go, well, you know, I'm doing this, but I'm not excited about it. Let's yep. start where you want to be. So okay. I, I'm like, I'm loving this conversation and, and you were sort of just walking through everything that, that I, I believe and feel about 
being an entrepreneur and being in business. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. We choose how we want this to be for us. And we don't have to defend it to anyone. <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. Because people are going to be like, well, wait a minute. What do you mean you're not making a bazillion dollars? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? They're like, what do you mean? <laughs> you gave up a, you know, an $8,000 package to sell a $200 package. Yeah. You know what? If I'm happy with my $200 package, you know, then let me be. That's so right. yay you, Sonia. Thanks. <laughs> That's my two cents for right now. <laughs> Thank you, Chalceta. Patty, you know, when, did you have anything you wanted to share? Yeah, when I, uh, when I first went out on my own, started my first company in 2004, I had an idea that I was, you know, what I felt called to do was working with teams and, and especially technical teams. So working with people that were having a hard time uh, developing the team, um, having a hard time leading in that technical space, um, moving from being a, a single contributor to being the, the team lead of a project or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I had curriculum I had developed around it. And, you know, then it got to where a client would say, well, we have a problem with X, you know, could you write something for that? And so, okay, you know, and I would write something. And so I was chasing the contract more than you know, spending an inordinate amount of time trying to learn about something that I didn't really care mm. one bit about. And it took probably, I would say probably two, maybe even three years before I said, I just, this, when I teach this, when I consult on this, it feeds me. When I teach mm. and consult on this, I feel drained and exhausted, you know, so you know, fast forward a number of years of going into corporate, out of corporate, into corporate, out of corporate, you know, and then now being in a space where I do a lot of corporate training, I have a very limited portfolio. And the company I work for is always saying, well, how, why don't you teach on this? Why don't you teach on that? I know you could teach this. I'm like, yeah, I could. I don't want to. <laughs> don't want to. That's right. Yeah. And it feels really good because when I show up to teach something, I'm, I'm teaching from my heart, not from my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Patty, how does he take that when, when you, when you're like, yeah, I could, but I don't want to. I mean, are, are they surprised? Are they, um, sometimes, you know? yeah. Okay. Sometimes they, they want to talk me out of it, talk me out of my conviction, you know, right. but uh, you know, because I, uh, I was a project manager for more than 20 years, they can't get it through their heads why I don't want to teach project mm -hmm. management. And it was like, you know, do you want me to kill myself or, you know, <laughs> so I have to say, no, I'm not teaching that. Nope, nope, nope. I'll teach leadership to technical folks, but I'm not, I'm not teaching about Gantt charts and burn down and all that stuff. And Patty, have you always had that ability just to be like, yeah, no, nope, not my lane? Or was that was that something that uh, that came through, you know, you just building um, and developing your voice? Yeah, I think definitely um, from building your own voice, defining your lane, um, getting some confidence about, mm -hmm. you know, what what you do and don't want to do and, and feeling confident enough to say, no, I don't, I really would like to have that $35,000 paycheck, but I'm not doing that. So. And, and Patty, just since, since you've had this experience, what do you think it takes to develop that level of confidence? Um, you know, I, I think it I think it's like Sonia said, kind of getting inside yourself, spending time with yourself mm -hmm. and saying, I don't feel good when I'm doing this. You know, I, I feel out of my depth or I feel out of my myself, you know, and I, and I'm not happy when I, when I do this, you know, that there's an exercise I've heard of and I'm going to totally botch it up, but it's like, if you're, if you're holding a food item, that's not good for you, and how it makes you physically feel as versus holding a food item that is good for you and how that makes you feel. I think it was kind of like that, just finally having the nerve to say, I'd rather feel good about what I'm doing than 
uh, feel super busy. And, and I was so busy trying to fulfill this other thing that, that wasn't me. Whereas I could sit and write and talk and speak and, you know, consult and coach around the things I loved all day long. Mm-hmm. But having to devote so much development time to something I didn't enjoy was just exhausting. Mm. And look at you now. (laughs) You know, Patty, I I think what's really incredible about what you said, and, you know, both Sonia and I are um, graduates of B-School and uh, B-School alum, and I'm a B-School alum from the very first year. So I think she's coming into her 11th year. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're both Desire Map facilitators. And how I just think it's so interesting that we are, just beginning to scratch the surface of people using languaging um, like emotional intelligence and that feelings are important. But but like long before that was a niche and long before that was hip slick and cool, Patty, like you had this sense like this doesn't feel right for me. Mm-hmm. And I just think that again, you know, we've been conditioned to discount our feelings and look at the bottom line and look at the practicality of things and look at, you know, what we've been told that we're good at, you know, and I think Charles said it, that's why the work that you're doing is so important. And I think what we're all doing is incredibly important and viable and vital. And Charles said it for you specifically, I think, because you are Mm hands-on with this our next generation, um, you know, like you were, you were getting to them at the intersection of them making these decisions. Like yeah. with, with the four of us, mm-hmm. like we've been down those roads. We have, you know, we have those hard fought battles. We've taken the emotional <laughs> sabbaticals. Um, we've done the unpacking. We've made our amends. We've, you know, done some self-realization and self-actualization and been like, man, I was an asshole or gosh, I wish I would have gone right rather than left. But a lot of these kids, and I, and I say that non-condescendingly, they have no idea. Mm-hmm. Right? They have absolutely no idea. And you know, it was interesting. I was listening to, um, I think it was a previous episode of Terry Gross. Um, Fresh air. Oh God. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Patty. Fresh air. Mm -hmm. And she had her guest host. He was interviewing a gentleman that just wrote a book about Facebook and it's called Facebook, the inside story. Mm -hmm. And he basically spent a year or so with Mark Zuckerberg and the team at Facebook and got their approval to talk about things on the record and blah, blah, blah. But what I thought was what really stood out for me was that there was a team within Facebook that was developed and their entire goal, like they became their own little nucleus within Facebook, mm-hmm. and their entire goal was how they could uh, expand their growth and get to a billion online subscribers sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And um, and when the guy who wrote the book was talking to Mark Zuckerberg, he's like, you know, do you think that was a mistake? You know, because what I think is interesting, and, and Sonia, it's really back to what you were talking about, is that what what meant more than anything to this team who rallied together and became kind of this band of brothers and sisters, and they're like, this is our mission. So, of course, in the in the true, you know, gig economy, Facebook economy, the way that, you know, the tech companies work where you, you live there, you sleep there, you eat there, you work 18 to 21 hours a day, you're rarely sleeping, you're living on coffee and nicotine, and oh. they, their entire mission, all they could see was expedited growth. Oh. But why or who or what it affect, like none of that mattered. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realize, like, you know, Facebook is the unicorn, um, but we have our own version of that. Mm-hmm. You know, at what cost are we churning and burning and striving and pushing and not connecting and not asking how we want to feel and to your point patty not saying no i don't want to do a course on this or that i don't want to teach that i don't care that i can Mm -hmm. i don't want to Mm -hmm. so i i think what i'd really love to unpack with you girls next is if you have a um 
if you have like a trigger, if there's a, a mantra or if there is something that you can go to, that you use to go to when you are back at that intersection mm -hmm. and it's time to pick a lane. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know what, am I going to take on this project? Am I going to work with this person? Am I going to say yes to this or no to that? Am I going to give my money here or there? Like what is the process, if you have one, or what are some of the questions or what are some of the rituals mm -hmm. that you might go through to ultimately land on the decision that, that with the hope being that this decision is really going to be what serves me mm. versus, versus the temptation that we all get into, which is which decision is going to make me the most money. Gosh, I've never, I, money has just never been the leading, you know, we have to survive. I totally get that. But money has never been the thing that I focus on to chase. For me, it is more of understanding um, what my purpose is. Like, like, I understand what my purpose is. Now, how that plays out could, you know, could lead me down a number of different roles. But when you have, when I have a decision or someone or something that approaches me you know, with an opportunity to do something, the first question is, 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 is it in line with who I am and what my purpose is? Because either it is or it isn't, mm. right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and if it's not in line, it could be the best thing since sliced bread. But it's, if it's not in line with what my purpose is, mm. then you're being deterred from what your purpose is. And so... Mm -hmm that is that's a gauge an easy gauge where you can say yes this is for me or no it isn't mm -hmm. um and so that's the first check-in for me now mm -hmm. sometimes you get a lot of things that are aligned with your purpose <laughs> right yeah yeah because true. what you think true, about true. and about you know i'm like oh this is my mission and it's like oh i've got this opportunity this opportunity and then it becomes a matter of, you know, capacity. You can only do so much. So you have to be prepared to say no to some good things sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what your limits are and what you're able to do. Um, because sometimes I have said yes to one too many things. And then the whole boat just starts to rock, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. like, whoa, we're really off balance because that, that was just over the edge there. And I'm like, I, then you have to sort of dial it back mm -hmm. and go, okay, this I can manage. So, so being clear on what your purpose is, you know, why, why are you here? Mm -hmm. So Charles said, if I may, I'm going to ask you just to, to take like a, a minute or two and elaborate on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you know if it's in alignment? Like mm -hmm. what, like what are the, what are the checks and balances for you um so is because, that work is that work or is that that opportunity gonna move you closer to your goal like like if my goal is to you know impact you know students within the the higher education space right you know um and and maybe even outside of it it's just sort of women in general right mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That could be a wide range, but I know that I'm in higher education, right? I know that that's the space that I'm in. That's the space that I'm operating. Um, it's, a, it's an easier space for me to operate too. Um, so I can sort of get the ball rolling right where I am because I, I think that's also incredibly important. It's like sometimes we're looking like we need to be over there. I'm like, no, you can start and be right where you are planted like right where you are, just look around, you know? Um, so for me, I think it is, it is asking the question, is this, is this opportunity going to help me as I'm looking to achieve my goal, which is to make impact with this population of students, mm -hmm. or is it not? Maybe it's, it's taking me off on a whole nother avenue of folks that I could impact but was that what my focus was right because right. I love people but 
you can't you can't rescue everybody, right? Sometimes <laughs> you have to stay laser focused. <laughs> That's right. And work the niche that you're in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in time, this is what I know. In time, you know that niche, you can begin to grow because you you've laid the foundational work. You've developed the, the things that you need to develop to serve that niche. And once that's like rooted in you, I mean, and you've got that foundation, you can begin to grow because you can solidly support that growth. But if you just start trying to come out of the gate, helping everybody all the time, you're going to get burned out. You're going to be okay. moving. You're not going to be effective, basically. And I think as women, sometimes we want to you know, we want to, we want to help and support and, you know, we love uh, opportunities and we love to say yes, right? Because it makes that us, we feel, do. <laughs> us feel good. But, you know, um, uh, so no, sometimes you have to temper that with, you know, the reality check that, you know, we, there's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Charles Sutter. And Sonia, how about you, honey? Well, now for me, you know, I've identified my core desired feelings. So that's my filter for everything. So do you want to share with us what your core desired feelings are? Sure. Like the main ones are uh, luminous vibrancy, sacred space, and connected. Mm. Mm. Hmm. So those are my top three. I have a few others, but those are you know, my, my core filters, if you will. Yeah. And so if someone approaches me, you know, with, with an opportunity or a project, How do you I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, does this make me feel luminously vibrant? Mm. <laughs> does, or does it create a lot of sacred space somehow? You know, does it, does it have meaningful connection? <laughs> And so I'm going through my filter thinking about it, like how does it work within my filter? And if it doesn't, I don't do it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's a great gauge for me now to say yes and no, whereas before it, it could be pretty confusing. I could get pulled in a lot of different directions and I had serious FOMO, you know? So like if I say no, I'm gonna regret it. Two years later, I'm gonna realize I missed out on millions or whatever, right? So <laughs> I just kind of did everything and, and like, I, you know, I'm number one and, um, you know, I'm much happier with the filter. <laughs> Good for you. I love that. You know, it's so, um, I'm trying to pull it up now. My, my computer is a little slow, but I saw this screenshot and I will, uh, I'll credit the person uh, who said it if I, if I can get it pulled up here, but uh, that fear of missing out, that is a real thing. Oh, here it is. Uh, so this is called, uh, so there's FOMO, which we all know is the fear of missing out. Uh, this is by a gentleman named Scott Harrison. Um, and it's called JOMO, the joy of missing out. Uh, feeling, <laughs> feeling content with staying yeah. in and disconnecting as a form of self-care. Uh, the an yes. the antonym is FOMO. I love it. <laughs> love it. I love so, it. Yeah. So I had that I had that earmark for us, Sonia, not having any idea at all that you would mention um, FOMO. So yeah. So this is uh, so this is JOMO. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. The the joy the joy of missing out. So uh, yeah, I'm yeah. experiencing JOMO. It's great. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's, what Patty's it's pretty. experiencing too now that she's she she doesn't do any uh project management training. Yes. <laughs> That's right. The joy of That's missing right. that. The joy of not missing that. Right? Yeah. yeah right? Oh. So Patty, do you do you have any checks and balances that you really tap into or anything that you could share with the listeners that are, you know, tricks and tools that that you've used for, you know, really anchoring in on, on the way that you make decisions? Well, I, I like the concept of, um, of getting rid of what doesn't serve you, mm. you know, because we get into such a habit of I've always done this, 
or I feel obligated or someone expects me to do this. So I have to do it. And I, you know, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I just went through a phase of saying, doesn't serve me not doing it and nice. feeling perfectly okay with saying that because it was, it was for my mental health. It was for my emotional health. It was for, um, you know, Sonia, you said sacred space. I have, I have this concept that's called white space and mm -hmm. it's, I need a lot of white space. And, mm. you know, think of it as a calendar. When I look at my calendar and it's back, 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 I get incredibly stressed. I mean, I get anxiety like I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. So I need white space. I just, I need yeah. that. And sometimes people don't understand, uh, you know, you, well, you've got, you know, you've got a whole free afternoon. You may think I have a free afternoon. I don't have a free afternoon because mm -hmm. that's my space to decompress, yeah. to debrief, to be with myself, mm -hmm. to read that book I need to be reading, um, whatever it is. And so I really guard that very seriously. And, and the stuff that just doesn't serve me, the stuff that you feel I ought to do is not the stuff I need to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Your I wants, needs, and desires say. are not my own. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. That's right. Patty, would you repeat that? That was really good. Would you say that again? Which part? <laughs> uh, about the, their heart's desires are not your own. Yeah, their wants, needs, and desires are not mine. That's mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. That is really, really good. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. You know, um, I just want to acknowledge, so we are at the three-quarter mark. It, it never, ever fails to amaze me <laughs> and astonish me at how fast this goes. Um, but we are at 2.43, and Sonia, I would absolutely be over the moon if you would share a little bit, um, not only with the, the three of us, but with any of our wonderful listeners, um, a little bit more about the copy doula. This, this, and, I, and I just want to preface this by saying um, I had the pleasure of meeting Sonia at a, um, at a retreat that Danielle was giving, which, by the way, She's never done a retreat before, and I have a feeling she will probably never do a retreat again um, <laughs> because that woman knows her lane. Mm -hmm. And doing the, um, the elongated, expanded, extended overnight in-person stuff just isn't, uh, that's not really her bailiwick. But um, Sonia and I were blessed enough to be part of that, and we got to meet at that, at that retreat. And um, Sonia shared something on the last day that she had written and it had everybody in tears and it had people saying to Sonia, like, oh my God, can I please get a copy of that? And so, which had kind of been a little underground for most of the weekend. Um, we knew that Sonia wrote, but like actually hearing um, the gift of her writing was such a treat. But, um, but I, I wanted to preface talking about the copy doula by saying, yes, it's a four, it's a four week old brand new baby business, but Sonia has been at this work. And I mean, not only the work, but the work, you know, that Charles said, and you and I talk about Patty, you and I talk about the work. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I have a sign on my, one of my cork boards that says doing the work is the shortcut. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, right. yeah. Um, so, Sonia, I'd really love it if you would tell us a little bit about the copy doula and where people can find you, and uh, and if you have an ask, if there is if there is anything that we can do to support you, because I know that you've also launched this gorgeous podcast, which, by the way, I listened to one of your episodes today before our call. Oh, Loved yay. it. Love you. You were so great. Uh, so, oh. tell us a little bit about about the copy doula and your podcast and and how we can support you. Sure, no, thank you. Um, you know, I when I was building websites, I, I always knew that I wanted to support women business owners. Um, I just wasn't 100% 100 sure on how. Mm -hmm. And um, it amazed me how time after time after time, when I worked with a woman, she came up against some serious blocks in writing her copy for her website, like creating offers, 
talking about <laughs> herself. That was like the worst. I mean, bios, good Lord. Right. And it just, you know, anything talking about themselves. I mean, it just, all of these unanticipated blocks would show up and I'm not the kind of person to be like, well, I'm just a web designer. So good luck. And let me know when you have something. Mm. No, no, no. I'm like, we're going to write this copy together, honey. You got to launch this site. You got a business to run. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And, but then that wound up being my favorite part. <laughs> you know, it, it wound up being what I really fell in love with. And mm. I would have these sessions with women where we'd both be crying at the end. And, you know, I just, I loved it so much. And I realized I can't, scale a business that's meaningful if I'm also doing the technical work of building a website. It's incredibly time consuming. Mm. Um, and so, but I wasn't ready to let it go quite yet. And, you know, I just had my stuff. I had my dollar signs that I had to hit. And then, you know, the story where I finally realized, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people kept telling me when I worked with them is that I was like a doula. They felt like they gave birth. Like when the site was finally launched, they literally felt like they had a baby. Mm, <laughs> and yeah. I thought that was so cute. And I, I really just wanted to, you know, witness the light in other women mm. um, and the work that they were doing. And so I, I was very clear that if I was going to work with someone, they were either going to be a coach or a creative Mm -hmm. or light worker or a healer, um, you know, someone who is really committed to bringing um, light and healing into the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, you know, I'm going to go full throttle with my site. I, I'm going to be woo woo and who I am. And I used to keep that really separate um, from who, who I was professionally. People didn't really see that side of me. And I was like, I'm going to bring all of me to the game. Mm. And so I made sure when I designed my site and built it, that it was woo woo and fun and real and authentic. And, um, you know, just trying to convey the message that I really do, you know, want to help and that I truly am a doula. Mm -hmm. Like I, I guide you through a whole process. And so the podcast, I, People told me for a couple of years that I should start one simply because I love great conversation, right? So I'm that person who goes deep fast mm -hmm. and people just don't mind sharing with me, right? And so it, they, people would say, oh, you should do a podcast someday. And then I finally said, you know what? If I'm truly committed to helping women tell their stories online, they need to have more than one way to do it. A website is not for everyone. And I was like, I at least want to be having these conversations. So I launched the podcast and then I realized, hey, I can actually just add that as a tab onto my site and have it all tied together, you know? So let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my, my podcast is called Cup of Real Talk because I love getting together for a cuppa, whether it's wine or coffee or tea or whatever and sitting down and having a real conversation. Mm -hmm. Something where it's not, nothing's held back. It's like, I see your heart, you see my heart. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're just two humans trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's why I named it Cup of Real Talk. And it's on uh, Spotify and iTunes. And then it's also in a feed on my website, one of the tabs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to be on my podcast, you know, if you want to hop on for some real conversation, you know, heck yeah, come on over. Um, if you, you know, ever need help with copy or know someone who does, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I love helping people tell their stories. Awesome. Yes, you do, Sonia. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, everyone, you can find Sonia at the copy doula, D O U L A dot com the copy doula.com and the link to her podcast is there as well and Sonia if they want to email you darling uh what's your email address well I'm working on that because I had some serious problems um setting it up on the back end so technically it's Sonia at the copy doula.com if it bounces back 
you know, you can still reach me at Sonia at Louder Marketing Group. Okay. And and if and uh, if nothing else, Sonia, can they just reach you through the website? Oh yeah, I have a form on there. They can go through the Perfect. website, or if they don't want to connect that way, you know, I I know that some people are a little more you know introverted and want to feel me out. You can just hop over to Instagram. You know, it's the the copy doula Sonia Petrick on Instagram. You can reach Fantastic. out to me there too and just follow me. <laughs> well, darling, you you are the real deal, and you are as authentic as they come. And uh, and I I love this transition for you. I'm so excited to be here to support you and and witness this change and you know this um, this courageous leap of being like, hey, I know like all the revenue is coming from this channel over here, but I'm going to take this huge leap of faith and be like. I have to go with my truth and trust that that flow will continue to stay open and that that channel will be fed. And that is my wish for you. And I certainly see that for you completely. And I'm just really excited also about the, the women who are going to get to work with you and benefit from this gorgeous thing that you're putting out into the world. So thank you for that. Oh, thanks. I might tear up a little bit. I just, I, I, the second I saw you at the retreat, I was like, Ooh, she's, Oh, she's my person. I, that girl over there. She's my person. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, darling. No, it was, it's, it's definitely mutual, my friend. And, uh, and what I, what I'd really love to do since we're talking about like keeping these channels open in our in our last few minutes together um i would like to at least open up and since we have a small intimate group which there's definitely benefits to that um and sonia you um you hadn't really answered this but we'll start with you if you have an ask and um and then if we have time um just what it, like what is the goal because in charles said you really spoke to this that that your decision-making process and the way that you ch have the checks and balances begins with, is this thing in alignment with my goal? Mm -hmm. So one, um, do you have an ask that we can support you with? Mm -hmm. And two, how do we obtain or maintain that our goals are truly in alignment mm -hmm. and that also support us financially? And and if you if you don't have a takeaway, that's totally fine. But if you have a little tidbit or something that you'd like to that you'd like to share, then then please do. So, um, Sonia, honey, do you have an ask for us or for our listeners? Anything we can do to support you? Um, just to keep me in mind, you know, like if you know of someone that's really struggling with their copy, and mm -hmm. um, you think that we might, you know, connect, I I would love, you know, to be introduced or for them to reach out. That would be awesome. Okay, you bet. Consider it done. <laughs> Charles, but how about you, honey? Um, oh boy. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I zoned out a bit there. <laughs> That's all right. Um, do, do, you, do you have an ask? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, my goodness, I am, as a co founder of Titan Women Collective, always yeah. looking for amazing women who are in a space in their lives where they are willing to give back um, to the aspiring generation of up and coming entrepreneurs and, and even professional young women that um, I believe need to be championed. Do you know what I mean? Like we really need to come alongside of them and support them as they move into the world, right? Um, yeah. Because, you know, nothing, in life, um, I mean, just speaking as an African-American woman, I learned life is not fair a long time ago, you know, but it can be, it can be a, um, a real disruptor for, for um, young women as they get out into that space and have to contend with the various things that, you know, young professionals and young Absolutely. entrepreneurs have to yeah. contend with. Um, and so what I know for sure is that as mm -hmm. um amazing women of influence that are right here in this small circle. We all know other amazing women of influence, right? Mm -hmm. um, totally. So I would love to just have uh, conversations and share more about 
Titan Women Collective and see if there might be a benefit um, for you or those you know um, that might want to consider coming alongside what we do um, in our program. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Charles Butter, so much. And uh, they can reach you about the Titan, uh, the Titan Women Collective where? They can reach me um, directly through my email. You can contact me directly, uh, directly. and my email is C as in Charlie, Y as in Yo-Yo, Medina, M-E-D-I-N-A, at fullerton.edu. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn um, or send me an email directly. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. So Charles Sutta Medina for anybody who is listening and that is the Titan Women Collective. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Charles Sutta, so much. I loved having you here today. Okay. Patty, how about you, darling? Do you have an ask? Is there anything that we can support you with? Other than those two little twin babies you're babysitting? <laughs> <laughs> who refuse to go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I don't really have an ask. I think the conversation today has been, um, you know, just very uplifting and very affirming. Um, it, it feels like, uh, especially at this time in our political climate and so forth, it feels like there's so much that's trying to tell us it's out of our control. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like, well, some of this might be out of my control, but what's really important is very much in my control, Absolutely. Mm. you know? So yeah. I think just reminding yourself of that is, mm -hmm. is really important. It's easy to get sidetracked with all the noise. Oh gosh, honey, I hope to that. It mm -hmm. most certainly is. And uh, thank you, Patty, very much. And thank you for producing another wonderful show. And uh, we are at 2.58, so I will, right. uh, simply wrap up by saying how grateful I am that you girls were on the line with us today. And thank you to anybody who is listening to the recording of this. Uh, I want you to know that you matter, that we need your voice, that we need your light. Sonia, I love that your business is about really helping women bring their light to the surface. And uh, there's two things I, I want to share. I, I pulled a couple of truth bombs. And as I shared, I am a master desire map facilitator, uh, as is Sonia. And so uh, the first one was waiting more for your future is not a betrayal of your past. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, wanting. Wanting more for your future mm -hmm. is not a betrayal of your past. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, Charles said, whether it's you working with these up and comers or for, for those of us that have felt so indebted or anchored or um, burdened by the things that we've said that we've wanted, like not wanting that anymore um, and wanting more for our future. I think to remember that that is not a betrayal of our past is, is really important. And uh, I will leave you darlings with this. May you seek to know the vastness of your light. Hmm. Yeah, that's, awesome. mm. that's one of my favorites. It's gorgeous, <laughs> right? I love may, it. Wow. May you seek yeah. to know the vastness of your light. Mm. So may that be the case for all of us, my loves. And thank you so much right. um, to what you are birthing, um, to what has yet to be birthed, mm -hmm. uh, to your success, to your joy and uh to the beginning and may i be the first to say happy new year yeah. so, <laughs> to, re to rebooting to rebooting yes. the new year yes. um all right my dears i will see you the next time and we are we are uh the women lead online forum brought to you by connected women of influence please take a look at what we're up to patty leads a wonderful online forum called in the ladies room uh, connected Women of Influence is doing some wonderful things, and I will be back next month. Actually, I will be back April 22nd uh, <laughs> with another wonderful guest. So thank you, ladies, so much. What a treat. What an honor. What a pleasure. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.